In this guide, I'm going to show you how to set up a subdomain on a Ubuntu server running Apache. Step one of this process is you need to configure the subdomain to point to your web server. And you're going to do this via your domain provider. In my case, my domain provider is namecheap.com. So I've currently got that open. And I'm looking at the settings for the domain I'm going to be using for this example, which is codewithsusan.com. I want to create a subdomain here of just demo.codewithsusan.com. So within these settings, I want to find my DNS options. And this is something that every domain provider will have. They'll have some section for your DNS settings. Of course, the interface is going to look a little bit different, but if you dig around, you should be able to find it. And once you find it, you should see the option to create records or configurations for that domain. And amongst these records, you should see a, a record that is like your primary record. It's your address record that is going to indicate which server, which IP address, any traffic to this domain should be pointing to. Now, if you're setting up a subdomain to point to a site on that same server, the record type you want to create is called the CNAME record. It's uh, essentially a alias record. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the host to be whatever our subdomain is. So in my case, that's going to be demo. And then for the target, we're just going to point it to our primary domain, which based on this A record is going to point to our server. So we're basically creating an alias to this record that points to our server. So here for the target, I'm just going to put in my primary domain. Alternatively, let's say the subdomain site I'm creating is on a completely different server than my primary domain. In that case, I would create another A record. I would use the subdomain, and then I would put in the IP address of the server I want this subdomain to point to. And this is the route I'm going to go for this example. So I'm going to paste in the IP address of the server that I set up for this demonstration. And then regardless of the record type you're setting up, the last option is your TTL option. Uh, and we want this change to take effect as soon as possible. So we're just going to choose the minimum time here, which is one minute. I'm going to save those changes. And while we wait for those changes to propagate with our name servers, let's switch context to our server itself, where we are going to configure it to uh, handle the incoming traffic from the subdomain. And the first step in this process is identifying the directory on your server that's going to act as the document root for this site. In my case, I'm going to create that now. I'm currently in the var www directory, which is a common location to put site files. And I'm just going to create a new directory, naming it after the subdomain I'm creating. I'll change into that directory. And then just to kick things off, I'm going to create a basic index file. I'll create that very quickly just using nano. I'll throw in some starter content. And then I'll save my changes in nano. I'll do that by holding down control X, typing the letter Y and hitting enter. And that should be enough for this proof of concept. Uh, of course, in your case, if you already had a directory with all of your site files set up, what you would do at this point is basically just identify the path to that directory. So for example, based on the directory I just created, the path that I want my subdomain to point to is this directory here. All right, now, now that I know that, I need to create a Apache site config that's going to route traffic to my subdomain over to that directory. And where I'm going to do this is in my etc apache2 sites available directory. Within here, I'm going to create a new config file. Once again, I'll just do this via nano. I'm going to name it after the subdomain itself. So it's going to be demo code with susan.com. And I'm just going to end it with a .conf uh, short for config. It's a common file extension we use for these Apache files. So I'll go ahead and create that. And for the contents of this file, let me go back to the notes that accompany this video. I have some configs we can copy from here. So this is down under step three, configure the site. We want to copy this virtual host config block. I'll paste that in. And uh, skimming through here, there are several things that you're gonna wanna change. The first is the server name itself. Here you just wanna put whatever subdomain you're currently configuring. For server admin, you could put an email address to associate with a subdomain. Uh, this is sometimes used on Apache servers. If there's, say, errors with this site, it can send you logs of those errors to this particular email address. Uh, that's only if you have email sending configured with Apache. Uh, if you don't, you could uh, omit this particular setting if you wanted. Following that is your document root setting, and you want to specify the path you identified in the previous step. Basically, this is saying that any incoming traffic to this domain needs to be pulling files from this path, this document root. 
And then following that, we have some directory settings that apply to that path. Uh, and these are some common settings you'll see, uh, which you can customize as needed. I'm not going to go into the full details of all of these. I will note that uh, if you want to learn more about them in the notes, I do have a link that talks about these specific configurations within our virtual host. Uh, so you can dig deeper. Or if you have questions about any of these specific settings, you can ask them in the comments. Uh, but proceeding forward, we can leave that as given in the example. And really the same thing for all these other settings. Uh, basically, we specify where error logs and access logs will be written to. You can customize these if you want or leave them as is. Uh, this final directive or setting down here is just indicating what file to look for when it is loading your document root. And you can see it's going to look for either a index.html file, or if it doesn't find that, it'll look for an index.php file. And as you saw when I set up my directory, I did create it with an index.html file. So that is what would be loaded. So with all those settings in place, let's uh, save our changes. And again, in nano, that's going to be Control X, the letter Y, and Enter. And then there's going to be a couple commands we now want to run to enable this config. And again, let me go back to the notes for this under Step 4, Activate. The first command is a2 enable site, and you want to uh, specify the name of the config file that you just created. In my case, I can run this exactly as written. So we could see that was enabled. Uh, following that, I like to run this uh, Apache 2 control command with the test flag. This is just going to check our configs and let us know if there's any syntax errors. You will typically see a message here talking about uh, your server's fully qualified domain name. You could ignore that. The main thing we're looking for here is this last line that says syntax OK. If you don't see that, you want to follow whatever guidance it gives you. It'll indicate uh, oftentimes if there's a problem, it'll tell you what file it's in so you could track that down. Uh, but here we're OK. So the final step we want to do is restart Apache. We're going to do that with the system control reload Apache 2 command. And let's test it out. I'm going to go to the browser. Let's open a new tab and load up our subdomain. And perfect, there's that index.html file that I had created. So everything looks good in this setup. Now, if you got to this point and your subdomain is not working, feel free to leave a comment below. Describe any errors, what you're seeing on your end, and I can try and help you troubleshoot.